It's weird, though, because when I walk into rooms at home, I don't get that kind of response. <laughs> Good evening, welcome to the Jonathan Watch Show. Let's take a look at who's on the show this evening in my green room. My first guest has fronted some of the most exciting, engaging, and controversial TV shows on your screens ever. She was the host of the original Big Brother, Long Lost Family, Life with the Extreme, and, of course, The Jump. It's the fabulous Davina McCall. Yeah! Always a pleasure, never a chore. Also here, a man who's really cornered the market when it comes to playing sexy psychopaths. It's not Paul Hollywood. <laughs> From Fifty Shades of Grey and the Fall, it's Jamie Dornan. Yeah. Hey, Jamie. Yeah. 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 My next guest is one of the most in-demand performers, both on TV and, of course, is a great live stand-up comedian, the very, very funny Mr. Rob Beckett, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Hey, Rob. Yeah. You're looking stunning, yeah. that's I'm excited about this. My final guest this evening starting one of the biggest breakout hit shows of 2016. It's called Stranger Things. I don't know how many of you have seen it. It's set in the 80s. It's a spooky as hell. It features in a great cast, some incredible young actors. They're destined to be the stars of tomorrow. I'm so excited to have them here this evening. We have Millie, Bobby Brown, Caleb McLaughlin and Gaetan Matuato. <laughs> Lovely to have you here. And we've also got Great music from someone who's been on the show before. She was on with Tiny Temper. She's a huge star in her own right now. It's the fabulous Zara Larson. Yeah. Hello, okay, now, of course, as you know, we've got three younger people with us in the green room tonight, so we need to be a bit careful about bad language and adult themes on the show. Uh, but we have Jamie here, who starred in a fairly steamy film. We're going to talk about Fifty Shades. So we've got Rob Beckett, his comedy can veer towards the adult. And we've got Davina McCall here. Let's face it, she sells hair products to the elderly. So we've got to be careful. <laughs> So uh, we could try and do interviews that avoid those subjects, but no, instead we'll, we'll do what IQ of us. We're going to ask the kids to go off to a safe space for now, so we're going to head you off. I'm sorry, I know it's like being at home when mum and dad have a party, but we're going to have to send you out of the room. But there's no extra expense involved because we're sending off to the room that ITV already have here. This is where they put Ank and Deck in their place. So it's got colouring books, soft toys, bean bags, several Pokemon, and that's the room that we put the most sensitive people in. Now, there were some pictures on the internet this week which some kids put up and they'd sent some messages to their parents and their relatives. Uh, and of course it's such a sweet thing, an innocent, adorable thing. Some of them, they got it slightly wrong. Have a look at this picture of some mermaids. These were drawn by five-year-old Bo for her mum, Jessica. And you can see when you look at her. <laughs> and you can see what she's going for. But you wouldn't want to put that on your fridge, would you, really? Just in case. Uh, or maybe you would, I don't know. And here's a lovely note. This was sent to Sophie Smith uh, by her seven-year-old daughter. This is a note she sent to her mum. And as you can see, it reads to mum, thank you for everything. And then... <laughs> I'm assuming maybe she added the last bit after she was sent to her room or something. <laughs> uh, should we get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Why don't we? Forget about building new power stations. She's got enough energy to keep the nation going single-handed. It's the phenomenal Davina McCall. Yeah. The Hotel Search. Hotel Trivago. Welcome back to the show, the lovely Davina McCall. So let's get my next guest out. He couldn't be in more demand as a leading man on the big end of the small screen. I think I'm safe in saying he's the nation's favourite role-playing sadomasochistic serial killer. It's the cute and cuddly Mr. Jamie Dorner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So you must get that. He's going to let me, can I? Well, what are you going to do? I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> What's the longest you've had it, Jamie? How long do you let it go? Um, I let it go uh, fairly long sometimes. I, I'm very lazy. That would be my, rain, my so main reason. You just don't reason. like shaving. You just don't enjoy shaving. I, like, hate shaving. Why? I also hate my face without a beard. You hate your Stop face? Stop it! I swear to God, I really hate it. Well, you're not very attractive, but you're not bad. <laughs> I mean, don't beat yourself up, Jamie. You're fine. This is probably a positive thing for a lot of people, but I hate. I also think I look really young and like. Oh, I look please. like. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I hate. Look, oh, don't you hate looking young, Davina? It's a nightmare. Okay. It's a nightmare. What, what do you not like about your face? What are your worst features? So we can get close up. What do you not like about? Uh, oh, what, it's just the general youthfulness. You think you look too boyish. Too I baby. forget when I when I look clean shaven, I look like a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> can we have a 
we had got a clean shaven picture of Jamie. Let's have a look at that. There we oh, go. Oh, there, yeah. Oh, no, you God. do look like a thumb in a hat. <laughs> That's like, you know, those little, yeah, you know, yeah. you can get little hats for yeah. thumbs. If I put a hat on my thumb right now, it would look like exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 So, when you were, before the movies, and we talk about TV movies, but before that, you were a model for a while, weren't mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Even with a thumb face. I know. Uh, yeah. a lot of that, my success in that world was with, with a beard. Yeah. But it's a weird thing then, not liking your face and being in a profession where your face is so crucial to it. You can't, you know, you, you're always going to be showing your face. Yeah, but I guess at least you're acting and you're inhabiting another character. It's just my own Jamie yeah. resting face is what I have an issue with. Okay. Uh, Jamie what is resting your resting face, face like? A thumb, is that I, what you're I need, really? I'm not resting here, so I don't know. No, I don't no. I feel I've like... got a really scary resting face. Oh, sorry, People I... often say to me, oh my God, what's wrong with yeah. you? Actually, I'd say, well, sorry, I'm thinking. Could we, yeah. could we, we need, hang on, hang on. We need to see it. Do you need to see it? Get restful. No. How scary is that? It's, yeah, it's yeah. quite... It's murdery. Murdery. <laughs> <laughs> and you would not, of course, because you specialise in it. That is... Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the, the fall, because uh, that's what put you on the radar, I think, for many of us. What a great show of fall was that. Um, and this was, uh, I, I didn't realise that because I didn't see it when it first came out. I thought it came, it was 2013, I didn't realise that. That's right. Uh, now, when you got that role, um, you didn't audition for the lead, did you? You auditioned yeah. for another partner. For Gillian's part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a very good audition. But, um, the, no, the copper. Uh, the, yeah, it's Olsen who died the, yes. in the second episode. Oh, no spoilers, come on. The second episode of the first of the series. First series. <laughs> Some people might not have seen it. <laughs> you, you thumb um, face. <laughs> I did audition for a good guy, for yeah. this obviously. And that's so, so uh, good that you, sorry, that, yeah. but how great is that, that you went from that part and then they said actually we'd like I know, because usually it actually happens the other way around. You go in for like one of the sort of jazzier parts in, in, in the production and you sort of think it goes relatively well or whatever and then they say, look, they loved you, but um, they're going to bring you back in for, you know, the postman or something. Like, <laughs> like, oh, okay. But were you worried then that you got passed over for being the good guy and they just said, well, no, you know, but you clearly are a psychopath. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know what that says about me, but uh, when I'm trying to be, maybe it's my resting face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And do you enjoy playing uh, troubled characters because um, mm. he is obviously a damaged human being. Yeah. Uh, Christian Grey is somewhat damaged also. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a reason why you know, uh, damaged characters are always at the forefront of drama. They're more interesting, you know, to observe. Um, I do, I do like it again. I'm not sure what that says about me, but I do uh, enjoy playing characters who are a little bit, um, you know, broken. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is from the the new series. This is Jamie in the Fall. If you haven't seen it already, you've got to watch it. It's just a great show. But you know, don't worry, we haven't spoiled too much yet. We just no. a, a, no. okay. <laughs> I want him to live so that he can spend the rest of his life in prison. There you go. It's the brand new series of the Fall of Stars, this coming Thursday on BBC Two at 9 pm. So, I guess when you left the last series, it wasn't 100% certain that, that he would survive, that he'd be coming back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to the audience perspective, of course, yeah. I, I knew you something. knew already? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was a big break for you in a way, I guess. Yeah. But then, of course, Fifty Shades of Grey, it goes through the roof. Suddenly, internationally, you're known. And you're playing this character who, as we know, you know, many people have read the book yeah. and, and uh, have enjoyed the book yeah. in any number of ways. Uh, uh, do you enjoy being Mr. Grey? Uh, yeah, you know, I do. Um, I've just done it for, um, we've just shot the second um, the third back to back, and that's it for you, is that right? Well, she wrote a she wrote a fourth book. Uh, she is terrible. Erica wrote a fourth <laughs> book um, called Grey. That is, it's exactly the same story as the first book of movie, but it's from his perspective. So it's the same movie. So you, you can't make that again. So you, you know, I'm, I'm done. With it. Can I ask you what yeah. about your wife? If I was Jamie's wife, I'd really struggle to watch that because yeah. of the chemistry. And you don't watch it. My wife's one of the most, you know brilliant human beings in the world and she also, she doesn't but also you know why she hasn't watched it why would she watch no. it you know yeah. um, she doesn't need to she's got your hand on tap hey let me ask you 
there's been talk online, are you nude in the film? Are you full frontal? Are you naked? A lot of people want to hear this. I'm not that interested myself. No. I, I feel it's a public service. I need to ask this question. I, also, I, Davina I, asked me to ask this yeah. just before the show. Um, I haven't seen it, so I don't know what... You must have seen it, but do the rest of us get to see it? That's what I'm asking you. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. You don't know? I don't know where the cameras were. I don't bother myself with that. So you were naked when filming? I don't find that so I don't really care about yeah, yeah, stuff, you know. Okay. I'm not like the nudist beach guy, but I'm, yeah. I'm I don't really mind. You're not Orlando Bloom, you're not out paddleboarding, but at the same time you. I don't know what you... that was, but oh my God, what was he doing? What, that was something. Like, amazing. <laughs> He, he, I must admit, you can see why he's proud. You, you, wouldn't mean, see, you wouldn't see me doing that. No. I hate paddleboard. No. Uh, okay, so let's move on from Gray. Yeah. Because uh, I want to ask you about things. You know, we've got the kids uh, in the room from Stranger Things. You've done a big thing for Netflix as well. Let yeah. me get this kind of like Siege of uh, Jadotville. Now, this Perfect. is a, a historical story. A true story about an Irish UN peacekeeping force who were sent out to the Congo in 1961 with that intention of peacekeeping and they didn't think they were going to come under any kind of uh, into any sort of combat and they ended up in this five day brutal siege um, very underprepared, 150 in the battalion and uh, my character, Commandant Pat Quinlan was uh, with the head of the battalion and uh, the average age was 18 wow. I mean they're literally kids, M and most of them had never even left Ireland so um, you know, it's quite, quite a story and being Irish, I couldn't believe I didn't know the story You've only got a soft uh, accent left, really. I don't know how strong it was when you were younger. You're from mm. Belfast, aren't you? So yeah, just outside Belfast. Okay, uh, but in America, sometimes they struggle with your accent, don't they? They do. They're really going to struggle with Siege of Jadaville because I've got a County Kerry accent, which is right down at the bottom of Ireland, and it's quite um, intense. I'm actually be softened it for that reason. Uh, and so the Americans, so you have to make it more palatable to their ears? I think you do, yeah. Um, not to take in any way from their... Um, uh, you know, capabilities to understand. Yeah. We're not but, but they do it with Americans on the news and stuff. They do that all the time with Irish people. It's so racist. Well, they put subtitles on you sometimes, haven't they? They have done that, yeah. <gasps> but I, <laughs> one time I presented an award and literally was so nervous I couldn't speak properly. It was like gibberish. So actually intrigued to know what the subtitles said. <laughs> <laughs> because you yourself didn't know. Yeah, no, I was just so I was nervous and I had a few drinks and it was bad. Right? <laughs> uh, but you don't drink and working, but I heard that so you, you had a drink before an audition once and it didn't go too well. Is that why? Uh, that was a terrible moment. Um, <laughs> was it, well, uh, the reason I had a drink, so it was, a, it was for a movie called Rock of Ages, which was uh, this uh, musical with like, Tom Cruise and Russell Brand yeah. and all yeah. those guys. And it was years ago, and it, uh, like eight years ago or something. And we had to sing, I had to sing... Um, that song, I've been waiting for a girl, right, oh, which, by the way, yeah. it is yeah, way fine. higher than I can sing it, right, anyway, the audition was at 10 a.m., right, I was first up, and it was at Warner Brothers Studios, um, in, and they have this big car park in the middle of Warner Brothers in L.A., and uh, I literally got up, brushed my teeth, went to the audition, and at 9.55, I'm in the car park, and I, uh, I, I bought myself a little quarter bottle of Jameson, I thought this would be brilliant, could give me a bit of confidence, yeah. and it was good for your voice, it was good to warm up the vocal cords. Of course it is, yeah. Well, of course, the only thing, the only thing I had that morning was like, you know, toothpaste, and then breakfast, and I just sat there, and I, uh, um, I thought, right, here we go, and I just drank it, and instantly puked, <coughs> instantly, as soon as I went to the door, and it's just like, oh, it's nice, vomiting, vomiting. Yeah. And all these people, all these, like, Warner Brothers execs, and all just driving past, uh, like, looking at me. So then I'm like, didn't think forward, I didn't plan the puke, but I should have thought forward that I should have something to freshen the breath after the, at least oh. the whiskey. Yeah. So then I go into this audition just thinking puke and whiskey, <laughs> and, and then try to sing that song, which I got nowhere near. It went so badly that I was going, it's like, you might, can I leave? I just don't want to do this anymore. And he was like, no, no, I, I saw something there. Like, well, let's do it again. Why don't, we, why don't we just go again? I think you're getting it into the groove now. We're in this tiny little room that was just smelling. So a man it. comes oh. in looking like a thumb, smelling a puke and whiskey. <laughs> Can't hit the notes. I know, it's amazing I didn't get the You didn't get the part. Yeah. Uh, well, The Fool is back this Thursday. It's at BBC oh. 2 at 9pm, so don't miss so that. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jamie Dorner. Jamie Dorner, uh, Jamie and Davina are sticking back. Still to come, we'll be joined by Rob Beckett and we've got the kids from Stranger Things. See you after the break. Just two kids. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out. Whether on panel shows or on stage, you never fail to deliver the very funny Mr. Rob Beckett. Come on out, Rob. <laughs> Hi, 
Hey, Rob, how you doing? Not bad, thanks for having me. I bought new shoes. Wow, what, for the show? Um, yeah. Thought I might dress up smart. Why didn't you wear them? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Fifty Shades, uh, we're going to not dwell on that, but you read it? Did you read it? Your wife no, read it? Did I'm, you, not, you I'm it? not ready. I'm not very good at reading at the best of times, never mind the boner. What do you, you know mean? <laughs> it's a tough... It's a tough one, and I'll read, yeah, I'll read on the train, and it's not ideal. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you about your baby, because congratulations, since you last came on the show... Yes. You had a new baby. I've got a nine-month-old baby. Well, that's a oh. lovely thing. Oh, that's it. OK, so how are you finding uh, father? Because you've already got one, haven't you? No, it's the first one. Wow, they didn't tell you about the other one. No, they didn't tell me. <laughs> it's really hard, isn't it? It's really hard. And I don't, I don't think I should, I don't think I should be in charge of a kid. Yeah. I don't think I'm responsible enough. I, 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 let me tell you this, you tell me you think I should be in charge of a kid, okay. right? Okay. But basically, I've been getting back into talcum powder. <laughs> when you do you tap? Does that do you mean? Tap? You don't baby powder, tap. You like use it on yourself? Yeah, do you tap? I do tap. It's good, isn't it? Oh, you tap? Well, you tap? Is that a thing? Yeah, I, I go through phases. What? Yeah. Look, you guys, what the hell is this? Yeah, that's what I thought, but I've been getting out of the shower. One puff on the front, one puff yes. on the back. <laughs> I, feel like I, I feel like a new man. Yeah. One puff on the front, one puff on the back. Yeah. You, you fit the pants on, you feel like, and you feel like you're, you're floating around the world. It's like... I feel like it's the first time I've got Reebok Classics. I'm just floating through life. <laughs> but I had a bit of incident. Well, I went to, I've one puffed the front. Oh. Went to one puff the back, triple puffed it. Oh! And, uh, I got myself in a situation, and it, you know, talc had gone in. <laughs> and the rule with talc is always on, never in. Never in. Oh no! So I thought, oh my god, what am I going to do? I laughed, it was out of me. Yes. Oh, yeah. I thought, stage one complete. Yeah. But then I'm left with a little pile of, like, powder. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do? She's coming home soon. I'm going to, you know, I've got to clear this up. <laughs> yeah. So I got before I rolled in it. Wow, so you didn't waste this. No, it, I rolled in it and I thought, well, I've got some of it up, so then I'll see a bit more. So I slapped the carpet, then I walk in through it and I've got most of it up, and I thought, oh, I've got most of it up now. Like, it's a little circle, and I thought, I'll just rub it every time I walk past, and yeah, eventually yeah. it'll go. Yeah. She comes home and goes, what's this on the floor? I said, you know, I've been talking, I've been one puffing, but I triple puffed it. Before I know it, you see, it's on the floor. I've rolled in it, I've slapped it, yeah. and now I've still got a circle of it. I've, I've done all I can, that's just our floor now. <laughs> and then she said, why didn't you get the Uber out? <laughs> and that's the first time I've grown thought of her, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> and I've got to be in charge of a kid, and my first instinct's rolling it like a dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're enjoying fatherhood, though. I bet you, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all the things people know, you know, it's tiring and there's this new responsibility, but it's yeah. a lovely thing. Oh, I love it. It's, summer. it's really good fun. I'm enjoying yeah. it. It's, it's great. It's just a. It's tiring, isn't it? It's hardcore, yeah. Yeah, because you've got two, haven't you? I have two under three, yeah. Okay. And so your, well, your youngest is nine months. The youngest is seven months. Seven months. Your, yours is nine months. Nine months. Wow, so it's Why not, yeah. Oh. Never gonna happen, is it? Never yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> you just think of the fun you're having talking each other. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you are a competent father, though. You're, you're, yeah. pretty, you're pretty much on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much. I'm, I'm in charge of sterilising the bottles. Okay. It's quite, it's just annoying, though, isn't it? You sterilise the bottles? Yeah, but I, after six months, you can almost start to... Well, that's what I think. Yeah, I'm saying that. Oh, she's six months. She, yeah, but she's going to know she's she I'm like, well, sterilise it. I mean, the baby's eating the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I spent an hour sterilising. She's on the step. That's true. That's true. It's a joke. <laughs> And she's posh, my kid. Well, I was going to ask you. My kid's more posh than me. <laughs> well, she's going to have a different upbringing. Where were you brought up? South South-East London. London. South East London. Right. My kid is on avocado and toast. <laughs> she's nine months. I didn't see an avocado until I was 27. <laughs> <laughs> It's not right, is it? Well, it's going to be. Uh, do you think you're gonna, uh, there's going to be a gap between you? Do you think there'll be different? I'm worried. I'm a bit worried, yeah. but it's just she's not going to want to know. Because what about on, on the baby's What if she don't like waffles? Yeah. <laughs> Potato smiley faces. Oh, Alphabet is spaghetti. Yeah. She's going, no, that's not for me. I'm on quinoa, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> is uh, I think it's called quinoa. Whatever you want to call it, mate, I'm not eating it. <laughs> The one thing I learned is because it's so busy and you never get a break, it's the constant 100, 100 miles an hour. One thing I've learned as a new dad, never rush a shit. <laughs> that is holy time. You know, I've done a Netflix series in there. <laughs> Men That's love it. that, don't they? I've got from Matthew uh, um, a loo roll holder and it's got an attachment to it for an iPad. Wow. That's the dream, isn't so it? So you want him to be in there? <laughs> he spends an inordinate amount of time. 
Thank God he's not watching this. I was in there so long once. When I stood up, I fell over because I've got pins and needles in both my legs. I went down up the tree. I stood up, I couldn't walk. I had no feeling. Jamie, long as long as you spent in the toilet. I haven't, I haven't got through Netflix series, but I, I'm, I, I always make sure I have my, <laughs> my phone on me. <laughs> not like in case I'm in there, not any. Oh, yeah, I no, but I go for my like yeah. Sky Sports app will be hit pretty hard. But sometimes like I go for every spreading. single story yeah, on yeah. Sky Sports. All the, even the rubbish ones, like the Burnley info. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Burnley got injury woes. I'm like, well, I don't care about Burnley's injury woes, but you're going to read it anyway. Yeah. Now, on your wife's side of the family, is she from a, the same sort of background as yours? Yeah. She's from a posher sort of. They're a bit posh. So so like we used to go Butlins as a kid, they used to go centre parks. Yeah. Um, so like we go centre parks now and I feel like I'm cheating on Billy Butlin, don't I? Yeah. I'm like on the rapids pretending I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> so where's the most exotic place you've been to then as a holiday, away from South East London? Where's the place where you thought I I have either I am in a different league. Oh I went different to different Yeah, I went well, I went to Dubai. Went to Dubai but I went the wrong time of year, didn't I? Went June, didn't I? And what's, is that just too hot? It's 45 right. degrees in oh. Ramadan, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never been so awesome first in my life. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw cooks pork on 45. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying on it like that. I'm some lounger. It's like George Foreman grill. <laughs> <laughs> the sea was too hot. Yeah. yeah well, that's, that's... Have you ever been in the sea? God, it's a bit warm for me. No. <laughs> Put a cold on someone? <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, how do you stay in shape? Well, because you're a young dad now, you go yeah. and visit, you're on tour. Most stand-ups I've met, when they're out on the road, they eat badly, yeah. they, don't, they don't take best care of themselves. No, it's, it's really hard, and I mean, I've got, you know, I want to try and get healthier. But the problem is that I've moved into, like, the sort of suburbs. Hold on a second, we can't let that picture go. Is that to scale, That's my face, isn't it? Up. And Jamie, you think you look like a thumb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you're touring at the moment. This yes. tour's been on, going on for quite a long while, it seems to me. Yeah, ages. Well, I think it's a combination of normally you bring out a DVD, yeah. don't you? But DVDs aren't really happening, are they? They don't sell like so they used to. They don't know. sell like they used to. But the, what, what makes me laugh is that, like, I'm doing the Amazon Apollo, and everyone goes, that's amazing, well done, you're doing Amazon Apollo. But, like, I've not done it yet. Like, all I've done is book something. Right. I could say I'm doing 12 nights at Wembley Stadium. I just have a ticket. And everyone goes, well done. But, 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 and so have, you haven't sold out Hamsworth Apollo yet? Oh, no, there's a few left. <laughs> but when it sells out, then I can sort of uh, relax and enjoy it. But yeah, still some tickets left. Uh, well, I'm thrilled he's come off for you. He's a lovely man. Isn't he, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. What a time you've had out here. Rob Bennett, we're sitting here. Mr. Rob Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Phil Hamill will be joined by their kids from Save the Things. And Zara Larson will be singing live right here in the studio. So see you after the break. <laughs> This proudly sponsored by Trivago, the hotel search. Hotel Trivago. Welcome back to the show. Let's get my final guest out here. They're the stars of one of the hit shows of the year, Stranger Things. And not everyone's seen it, and if you haven't, here's a little taste. It's great. Go, 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 go,
who vanishes into thin air, but he vanishes to the unknown. And his family and friends come look for him. Me and Dan are one of his friends. Yeah. And we find this strange girl. He messes everything up. Yeah, yeah. technically. All right. Well, it's, uh, it's been huge, hasn't it? I mean, I, would it be fair to say that it's changed all your lives? Of course, you're very young, so anything that's happened is going to change your lives, I guess, to an extent. <laughs> but, but it's changed. I mean, you must get recognized just about everywhere. Have you noticed that, uh, that effect? Have you been having a lot of fan attention? Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, I've been getting recognized on the street all the time. I mean, there's somebody that actually tattooed me on their arm. Wow. Two, two instances that I know of. Right. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yes, it is. I wouldn't have a child on my arm, but, you know, <laughs> but they're just very intrigued by our characters. It's kind of, it's kind of weird, but well, nice. I'm guessing none of you have any tattoos yet? No. Oh, good, good, good. I'm okay. 47. Are you tempted? <laughs> Are you when you're old enough to legally have tattoos? I'm scared. You know, I don't think that would mark my body. No. Good, I'm not going to ruin all this chocolate, so. <laughs> You play, uh, you play one of the friends who's looking for the missing friend. Yes, okay. um, I play Lucas Sinclair, and he's very conscientious. He's not, he doesn't trust everyone. Um, he doesn't trust Eleven. She does weird things. He doesn't really invite her to his group. And he's very loyal to his friendship, and he's always going to look after everybody. He's always going to have everyone's me. back. And Gayton, you play uh, the other friend, of course. I play Dustin, the um, food-loving... Um, one liner king character. But that was a lot. Yeah. I think that sums it up. Let me, one of the distinctive things, and people notice you have a distinctive way of speaking, Gayton, and that is uh, built into your character, isn't it? Because there's a, a condition, and uh, tell me if I've said this right, or you should perhaps say it. It's cleidocranial dysotosis? No. Uh, well, back in the 80s or the 70s, it was called cleidocranial dysostosis, mm. but now it's called the correct way cleidocranial dysplasia. And it's a condition where you're born without your collarbones. I don't have any. It affects your facial growth, your skull growth, your um, it affects your teeth. So that's why I don't have any. These are fake right here. I have teeth, but I mean, they're all baby teeth. But um, they, I, they need a lot of surgery. And I have a really mild case, and a lot of people have it much worse than I do. And I feel like putting it into the show is really raising awareness for it. And I'm lucky that mine was very mild, but... Now that it's in my genes, which you, it usually is passed down through genes, it wasn't for me. It just happened. So now that it's in my gene, I have a 50% chance of passing it down in my genes, and it could be much worse for them. But yeah, I just, I just want to raise awareness for it and let people know that it's not something they should be um, afraid of showing. You want now, Millie, you had to, uh, as we just saw in the clip, you, saw, you, had, you had to shave your head for the part. Yeah. Well, that shows a lot of commitment for anyone, but especially for a young woman in show business, you have to do that when your first big gigs. Was that a tough decision to make? Were you, were you comfortable with that concept? Oh, yeah, I was very excited. I mean, when I first found out, yeah, I was like, okay, that's negotiable, you know, we could negotiate <laughs> something. And then I was like, no, no, it's not. It's not. And then it was one day where we was all in school, and... Um, you know, Caleb goes in first to have his hair styled. You know, Gayton, Noah, and Finn, and then I'm the last one. And I go in, and it just all goes off. And then I come into lunch. But it took about like two hours. It took about two hours, yeah. So did you have long hair before? It was pretty long, yes, didn't it? it was about, no, it's not. It was probably about down to here. Yeah, but the boys didn't actually recognize me. Okay, uh, now what were you guys like when you were this age? I suspect nowhere near as frighteningly confident. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you're more intelligent than me now. <laughs> <laughs> I just find it amazing though, because like now like you can put a show on and like, be streamed like straight to your phone or your tablet and stuff like that. But like when I was your your age, that never happened. Like, do you know what this is? Like <laughs> It sounds like a mix between a dolphin yeah. and a speedboat. Like really? <laughs> do you know what it is? It's the internet. <laughs> when I was a kid, that's what the internet <laughs> sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> And basically, you don't have to go on the internet after six and at weekends. Wait, but what, what year is this? This is only about 15 years ago, right? And basically, if you was on the internet, you had one computer in the house, yeah. and your mum picked up the phone, <laughs> you weren't on the internet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, game over. Yeah. I downloaded 
give a trailer to a film, I download, you know, you know, you can go online. You have to download a trailer? Yes, but wait, 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 I had to download a trailer to Nanny McVie. Guess how long it took? 72 hours. <laughs> For three nights, going. Nanny McVie will be ready soon. <laughs> okay, so guys, I'm going to do a little test with you here. You guys can do it as well. I thought I'd see whether or not, in your research for the 1980s, whether you'd fully immerse yourself. So I'm going to show you. We're going to set it up like an 80s, uh, a little 80s game show. We I have can't a little. Do that. They live in the 80s. Yeah, well, no, oh. they're not being quizzed. No. Oh, okay, oh. okay. So uh, let's play. Things were stranger in the 80s. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, you can really say we've got a conveyor belt out there. This is uh, Things Were Strange in the 80s. And I'm going to put things on there, and you guys have to decide as it's going past you, was this a real thing or was this not real in the 80s? Will you guys catch at the end of this? OK, let's go to the first question. <laughs> Which of these famous duos from the 1980s were a married couple? Was it the Crankies? OK. Was it George and Andrew of Wham? Or was it Annie and Dave from the Eurythmics? Uh, Annie and Dave. Fellas? Yeah, Annie and Dave. I think it's that. No, no, it's, it's, it's these lot. It's yeah. that lot. You can't it's change. That's not fair. You can't change. Yeah, it's your C. It's your C. Well, you did say C first, Millie. That's fine. Okay. Wow. So, so no need to get it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm you. it was the Crankies. It was. You got it right. There you go. One for Caleb. Here's an epic. Have a look at this man here. He was popular on TV in the 1980s. Oh, oh really? Terrifying. Now, uh, what, what did he used to whack children with on his TV show? <laughs> Was it a fish? Oh. Was it a mallet? Yes. Oh, that's or was it a feather duster? Okay, I'm gonna say that fish. His last name it's is so cool getting hit with a fish on it. I mean, it's fish. Like a fish. Yeah. So we've got two fish, one mallet? A mallet. Yeah. Millie, you're right with mallet. Oh. Which of these uh, was not a flavour of crisp in the 1980s? Was it hedgehog? Was it kipper? What was not favourite? What was not a oh, flavour? Yeah. Or was it mushroom soup? Which one was not a flavour? This is really hot. Hedgehog. Hedgehog, yeah. Yeah. Hedgehog. Mushroom soup. Hedgehog was a flavour. Oh, no! Mushroom soup. No, mushroom soup was not a flavour. No. no. Is this, is this, you haven't read that. Is this true? Wait, let's just review. You said that there's a flavour crisp of a hedgehog. Don't do those spooky eyes on me. <laughs> Take it down. <laughs> Oh, ideally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's our last question for you. Which of these in the 80s was uh, not a children's television? Oh, oh I think I got this one. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. Was it 